Hey everybody, today I wanna to talk about custom hardware, printed circuit boards, and making embedded systems that you can actually deploy out in the wild. So welcome back everybody. Most of the content on this channel is software based. I have done a few videos on embedded systems. I'll link to those in the description. And some of those videos talk about how we write software that interacts with hardware. But I've been thinking for a while that I actually wanna do a video on making hardware. And then our friends from NextPCB contacted me. They wanted to sponsor a video. I wanted to provide some discounts to my audience. So more details on that later and down in the description. But the point is, is today seemed like a really good day to talk about custom hardware. Now, if you've watched this channel at all, you know that I love software. But when I started getting into embedded systems back in 2005, 2006, one of the things that I actually really loved about embedded systems was that I actually got to start developing hardware as well as software. And that's really cool when you find that you have a need that you you can't find a commercially available product that provides the hardware capabilities that you need. It was just really awesome as a software guy who hadn't really gotten into this to be able to then craft my own hardware that could accomplish the things that I needed done. And I see this over and over again in my students when I teach embedded systems. So usually when I start teaching students embedded systems, we're working with stuff like this. We've got development boards, we have some sensors, components connected through breadboards and jumper wires. And this is really good for understanding the basic concepts of what we're working with, but it doesn't take very long with this kind of setup before students raise their hand and say, hey, how could I make something that actually, like that I could wear, that you could take for a run, that I could actually feel like, how can I make a real device? Something that feels like something that you would buy commercially. And so that's where today's discussion comes in. The answer is that usually we're going to print a custom circuit board, something like this, which is basically going to take the circuit design that we tried out on our breadboard and condense it down into a single board that's hopefully smaller and is going to do the same thing, only hopefully better because we won't have jumper wires all over the place. So let's say you've got a circuit design, something that you've tried out, you've got an idea, you think it's gonna work, and you wanna take it to the next level. Today, I wanna to talk about how that process works. So now the first thing you're gonna need is some software. So we have a few options, Altium, Eagle, and KiCad. There's also Easy EDA, I've heard is nice. I haven't used it, it's a web-based option. Now I've listed these options here because they're the options that I'm familiar with, also because they represent three points on the price spectrum, with Altium being most expensive, KiCad being free and open source. And personally, I usually use Eagle, which is the one in the middle, but any of these three are gonna work. Now, I don't have time to do a deep dive into Eagle today, and that's okay because the folks over at SparkFun have some great Eagle tutorials. I'll link to those also in the description. And no, they're not paying me to say nice things about them. These are just the Eagle tutorials that I recommend to my own graduate students when they come along and wanna learn how to do this. But the point is today, I'm not gonna get into the weeds. I wanna stay high level and talk about the process. And then of course, you let me know if there are pieces of the process that you want me to dive deeper into in a future video. So the first thing we're going to design is our schematic. This is the logical layout for your circuit. It has the components that your board's going to have on it and the connections between components. At this stage, you don't really have to think about where things are going to go on your board or even how big your board is gonna be. This is just where we draw out our circuit. We look at how the electricity is going to flow, how things are gonna be connected. So here's an example schematic from one of my projects. The schematic phase is really, like I said, one of just connectivity. You're looking at what are my components and how are these things all connected together? So here you're specifying values and names and things like that, but not actual layout. It's really just the logical layout for how things are supposed to be put together in this particular circuit. Regardless of which software package you're using to edit your schematic, typically you have access to a bunch of different component libraries. So you don't have to design necessarily all these parts yourself. You have resistors, capacitors, inductors, jump as well as some of your integrated circuits. These are often provided either by the manufacturers or someone in the community who just happened to make a package for you and that can be really, really handy. And so then you can typically just drop these in and place them wherever you want in your schematic. So nothing complicated here. Well, I mean, you can make it as complicated as you want. It's a circuit, so it could be really complicated, but the actual task of bringing in these components and adding them in and wiring them up, that's not particularly complicated. Okay, now once we have our schematic, then you also wanna produce a layout. This is the stage where we start thinking about sizes and dimensions. I'll just show you an example layout. This is the layout for the board we've been looking at. And you can see if we come down here, 
we specify the size of the board. We also, we can come in here and we can see like there's a place for an antenna to come in. There's a footprint for that. And you've got connectors for headers and a bunch of these different components. So this is just specifying where everything belongs. These footprints correspond to the packages that were in the schematic. So each component in the schematic has a footprint here, and then we connect those components with copper traces. In this case, those are all shown in red. Now note, you can also have multiple layer boards. So like right now, all of these are all on one layer. That's why they're all in the same color. I could have boards that are two layers deep or four layers. And so as things get more complicated, sometimes you need more layers. But this is a simple example. It's really just using the one layer and then we use the bottom layer. So it's a two layer board. We use the bottom layer as a ground plane. Now at this point, you may have a ton of questions depending on how much experience you have. You might be saying, wait, hold up. What about routing and trace widths? And should I use through hole or surface mount components? And of course, like I mentioned before, there is a lot we could discuss in here, but today I just wanna keep things at a high level and talk about the process. We can definitely discuss deep dives into a particular aspect of circuit board design. If there's things that you're not seeing in existing tutorials, and if you don't mind learning hardware from a person with three computer science degrees who doesn't have very much formal electronics design education, I'm pretty much a self-taught electrical engineer. But once we have our schematic and our layout, we are ready to make our boards. At this stage, we need to identify a manufacturer. Well, we don't need a manufacturer. It is possible to etch your own boards with a laser printer and a bunch of chemicals. And it's one of those things that maybe you should do once just to say you've done it. But I find that it makes a lot of mess and generally it's not worth the effort that it takes to do it myself. So if I'm gonna print this board, I'm going to use a manufacturer. And the manufacturer that I'm using as an example today is NextPCB, which is our video sponsor for today. Now there are a lot of different PCB manufacturers out there. One nice thing about NextPCB is they specialize in small run orders. So a lot of times when I'm making boards, I just wanna see if it works. I wanna make a few devices. I don't wanna make 100 or 200 or 1,000 devices. I just wanna make one because there's a really good chance that my first run is gonna have a problem with it. And so I need something low cost where I can just order a couple of boards. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, NextPCB is providing a discount to anyone watching this video. I'll put the links down in the description, but these discounts can bring your price down even further, especially on your first order. And I'm guessing no one's gonna complain about that. Okay, so now regardless of who you go with, the next step is generating your Gerber files. No, this has nothing to do with baby food. Gerber is just a standard vector format that has become this standard for sending PCB designs to manufacturers. And so whatever software you're using, that software is going to be able to generate Gerbers for you. So here in Eagle, you use the CAM processor to generate Gerbers. And we can go through and we can look at the different layers. And, and of course, we can customize some things here. I'm just going to leave everything as the standard defaults right now. And then using those defaults, I'm just going to export these out to my hard drive. Pretty easy. Now in this stage, it's really important to keep in mind and take a look at the manufacturer's instructions. Now this is because each manufacturer has different limits. They may limit how thin traces can be, how close together elements can be, and you don't want to put something in your board design that they can't actually make. So usually I find the defaults to be good enough. They usually work, but you just want to be careful. So you don't end up spending money and waiting for shipping just to find out that your boards you ordered don't work. One other thing at this stage that I think is really cool is that NextPCB also offers their own free analysis software. They call it NextDFM. It's free and it's there to check your design files for you just in case you happen to miss something in their limitations. And it will basically take a look at your design files and help identify errors before you order, which can also save you time and money. So I definitely want to point that out. Okay, so now once we have our Gerber files, then it's time to actually order our printed circuit boards. I'm gonna just demonstrate how this works on the next PCB website. And this process will vary a little bit based on which manufacturer you go with. Basically, I'm just gonna go in here and upload my Gerbers to get a quote. And then in addition to uploading our Gerbers, you're gonna come down here and you can see there's a bunch of different options. There's things like, do you want your boards to be printed on FR4? That's the default, but there are a few different options that you can see here. You can select how many layers you wanna print, what the board type, the size, a lot of this is gonna be populated automatically when I upload my Gerbers. Um, you're also gonna specify how many you wanna make and the color of the solder mask. And I'm not gonna go through all these details. There are a lot of them. The main thing to keep in mind is that most of the time the defaults work great, especially for a first project where you're just testing this out. 
And going with the defaults often means less customization for the manufacturer, which means your price is usually a little bit better. So if this is your first PCB, I would stick with green and you know white silk screen and standard PCB thickness and all of that, just because that's gonna keep your price down and it's gonna keep your shipping time faster because it means they don't have to configure things on their machines differently. They can just run your job with the same settings that just about everybody else has. Now, if you have specific needs, especially once you know what you're doing, then feel free to customize to your heart's content. Okay, so now once you have ordered your boards, then you're gonna have to wait a certain amount of time. That depends on the manufacturer, where they're shipping from. And of course, during this pandemic, sometimes shipping seems to be taking a little bit longer than usual. But once your board arrives, you're gonna get something like this, right? This is a purple one. Um, let me grab, so this is, this is probably more like what your first one's gonna look like. Now, this one has kind of a funky shape. Uh, there's a story behind that, which I won't go into, but um, it was for a wearable device and it just, we needed to fit a component right here in this hole. And so that's the size and shape we went with. Now, when your boards arrive, you're not quite done. Now, the thing is, if you look at these boards, you notice that they don't have any components on them. What you really want is a board that looks like this, that has its components already assembled and so that's the final stage in our manufacturing process is how do we get it assembled? How do we actually put the components on there? Now you have some options here as well. Usually if this is a very first run and I don't have a lot of confidence whether this thing is gonna work, I will often just do these myself. I can use a soldering iron, I can use a reflow oven, which I have available in my lab. I've seen people use pancake griddles and toaster ovens to do this. There are a wide range of options available to you. As you get more confident, or if you have a bigger budget and you don't mind spending the money, and or you just don't know how to solder stuff, then the other option is you can also pay someone like Next PCB or another manufacturer to actually assemble your devices for you. In this case, you just you can either tell them what to order and they will order it and then they'll assemble your boards for you, or you could ship them the parts, you order them yourself and ship them to them and you just tell them how you want them to actually assemble the board and then they will go ahead and build it for of course a price and that's definitely the way to go if you're making a lot of boards if I'm manufacturing a device if I'm making thousands of these things there's no way that I'm going to assemble them one by one by hand that just takes too much time it's not worth the effort but if I'm only doing one and I think maybe I want to make sure this thing really works and I want to be able to test stuff out as I go then it often does make sense in my opinion to solder things and assemble them by hand. And so I know I've stayed pretty high level and there's a lot of details that I have left out in this video. Hopefully we'll pick some of those up in future videos, but I hope at this point it gives you an idea of what the process looks like when it comes to making printed circuit boards and your own custom hardware. And I hope this gives some of you out there who are just thinking about getting into this a little more confidence. This is really not that crazy difficult to do. You can do it. Thanks again to NextPCB for sponsoring this video and best of luck to all of you as you get started making your own printed circuit boards and custom hardware as you expand your repertoire outside of just software. Because in my opinion, that's when embedded systems start to get really fun is when you're playing with both. I hope this is helpful. Drop this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you don't want to miss my next videos and until next time, I'll see you later.